I'm Tim Camisa from TroutandFeather.com, and I am honored to have a special guest on this episode, Mr. Andy Kitchener of Semper Fly Fly Time. Andy, welcome to the show. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so awesome to, to see you today, but as the audience probably has figured out, we are on a Zoom call. We're doing that because why don't you tell everybody where you are right now? I'm currently in sunny Yorkshire. Uh, the Dare I say the home of trout fishing? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, we've just lost half the viewers right now. No, of course you can say, you can say whatever you want. I'm over in, you know, Western Pennsylvania. You're across the pond and we're gonna talk fly tying today. Are you ready to share some of your favorite fly tying materials with everybody? Yes, yes, we're quite willing. Probably surprise a few people. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Everybody, you're gonna love this one. Stay tuned. All right, so Andy, give us your first material in no particular order. What are you choosing when you're tying flies? Um, usually there's a feather on it of some variety, and it's I, I either tie little black things that float or plink hammers that uh, will drag things to the surface. So for me, grizzle hackles, black hackles are always in my fly box. You know, they're they're, they're essential fly tying materials for me. Um, I'm with you, Andy. What is it about grizzly hackle? I mean, there's something about it that it, I, I don't care what fly I'm tying. If it's a dry fly or an emerger, I always use grizzly. I, maybe I'll use shades of grizzly, like a, some variants. I love Cree, but what is it about that that you think fish love? Um, I, I, I don't know whether it's that the mottled effect when it's sat on the surface, it, whether it, you know, it makes it look more three dimensional or whether it's just here. You know, I think the spread of the hackles, you know, in the different colors, it it, it, um, it just doesn't make a fly look as heavy. Yeah, I think you're right about that. If you're choosing, do you have a preference, of a cape or a saddle? It, it really depends what I'm doing. If I, you know, if I'm going for a wet because I'm popping over to Ireland, then, um, you know, I want something really soft because I'm usually trying to drag something through the surface of the, the film. But if I'm in Yorkshire, for example, then it'll be something nice and stiff. I'll, I'll, it comes down to the feather. You know, I might be going for a neck feather where I want something really small. Um, and my, my eyes are getting too blind and uh, fingers too fat for the size <laughs> twenty eights now. But um, oh, gosh. you know, when when you're down on the size twenties, you know, you, you want those uh, little little neck feathers. I will say the one thing that I love about grizzly hackle and hackle in general, we are so lucky today because if you look around and the hackle in the United States, at least. We have saddles now that are, you know, 12, 15, greater than 17 inches long. I mean, you can get so many flies out of one feather. It's just absolutely crazy. Is it kind of like that in the UK or do you get a lot of the feathers from the United States? We get the feathers straight from the States. Uh, there, there are two major feather vendors worldwide and uh, we get them here. And those, I mean, those long feathers, they're fantastic. If I'm going piking or musky as, as you know, uh, uh, equivalent over there, then frankly, I love getting those 15 inch feathers and it's one yeah. fly. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right. Well, this was a great first, first choice. I love your first choice. We have a little controversy though, because, you know, you're the owner of like the number one fly tying company in the world doing all these synthetics and your first choice was good old traditional hackle. So I love that one, Andy. You look at hackles, you look at CDC, they today cannot be easily replicated. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm a geek. I've got a thousand pound microscope on my desk and I, I look at things, uh, you know, my mentor always taught me, don't just tie with something, look at it, crunch it, look closely. Um, I don't think he intended me to put it under a thousand pound microscope. But, you know, you look at a CDC feather, we, we can't replicate it. The, the barbules on it, the, the ability to hold a, a fly up in the water. I mean, one of my favorite patterns, uh, it ought to be banned. Just two CDC feathers wrapped on a very small hook. You know, it's, it's small, it just sits there. But with a little bit of nano silk, that's all you need. 
yeah, two CDC sure. feathers and a bit of thread. Absolutely. So I think we made our transition. So item number one, we went with the grizzly hackle. Number two, is it safe to say CDC is on your list as well as a favorite fly tying material? CDC is an essential. Uh, I mean, I generally use the naturals. The dyed versions have their their, their uses, but um, to me, a little gray or black uh, CDC feather, a grizzle or a black hackle, uh, they're, they're my natural materials of choice. I'm with you 100%. I'm very fortunate. My dad's best friend, his name is Kirk. Kirk is a duck hunter and he hunts geese as well. And I, we do little trades where I'll give him a bunch of flies in exchange for all these CDCs that he plucks for me. And I am so fortunate to have him. Now, the one thing I want to mention, and I maybe you do this, maybe you don't. I think I, think I kind of heard it in there. You, you, you'd like to tie and fish soft tackles a lot. Will you use CDCs subsurface too, or do you just prefer to use them as a dry? I generally use them as dry. I'll, if I'm going subsurface, then I'll use a, a soft tackle. Good friend Melvin Wood is another good influence on me as far as his Irish fly patterns. And that, that soft tackle through the surface film, you know, he's been really influential for me. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. The one thing I'll mention to all the viewers out there, it seems like CDC as a soft tackle has really caught on in popularity over the last couple of seasons, especially with the rise of European nymphs. The one kind of comment that I'll share with those, though, especially tires and fly fishers, is that CDC is it's just excellent whenever you fish at subsurface. But those, you know, those little fibers, they really collapse. So if you're going to be fishing it in fast water, it's almost just a waste to put it on there. So that's when I go with, you know, something like a head and soft tackle. But if I'm going to be using a CDC in a little bit of a slower water subsurface, that is just perfect because they just really move and undulate almost more so than some soft tackles out there. Though partridge, there's I have a soft spot for partridge, but that's that's another story. Okay, everybody, if you are enjoying this video so far, click that like button right now. That tells me that you want to see more videos like this in the future. Now let's get back to the interview. Two materials down. It sounds like you and I have a very similar list. What is next for us? Uh, for me, the, the the most essential material next would be the dubbing, the body. And for me, uh, there's two materials in my box that I, I use solidly now, and that's KPOC. You know, it, it's an absolutely incredible material and ice dubbing. With the two blended, then, you know, you've, you've got that sparkle, um, you've got the thorax with the ice, or you've got a wonderful body with the K-pop that's going to make your fly just sit on the surface. Those are those are really cool. I like how you're combining the two. And I also will throw in there for ice dubbing. Sometimes I'll just take a little piece of ice dubbing. I'll tie it in as a tail, and it looks similar to a trailing shuck. Uh, ice dubbing is just an essential. Let's let me pick your brain about K-pop because that's something that dubbing has been around for decades, as far as I, as I know. And if I remember correctly, they used to use that inside of life preservers because it, it floats naturally. Now it's a natural material and it's, yep. it's kind of disappeared from fly tying. And, and this is where I'll give Semperfly a, a plug. You kind of resurrected it. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that process? Because for anyone who doesn't know about KPOC dubbing, you should add this to a cart somewhere right now from your local fly shop or tell your fly shop to carry it. It's easily my number one dry fly dubbing. It floats you can make a dubbing noodle unlike anything else. You'll think you're a professional tire when you use it. it. It's that good. Can you tell us like how it came to be? Because we have to thank you for this one. I looked at K-pop dubbing and I'd seen there are a couple of very small manufacturers doing very small hand, craft, almost craft batches of uh, K-pop. The pro team are really influential for me. Uh, you know, I'm always looking at what you guys are tying and... Um, uh, trying to analyze how I could make your flies better. And obviously, a floating material is critical. And I've experimented with uh, floatants in uh, uh, walls, in feathers to, to get materials to float. But KPOC is actually a conical hollow fiber. It's a cotton, but it's just not used because the, it, it's only half an inch long fibers. So it can't be used by uh traditional haberdashery clothing type industries but it was used in life jackets because it'll support 30 times its own weight in water now we're talking of a conical fiber um if you get a mouse and you shave off its pubic hair it's about the same diameter we're talking fine you know 
<laughs> I, I'm not even sure where to comment now, but I want you to keep going because by the way, for all the viewers right now, if you're like, Andy knows his stuff. Whenever I say like, we could geek out for hours talking fly tying and fly fishing with Andy, we could geek and nerd out for hours. Andy is just, he knows all. Keep going, Andy. I, let's pubic care included. Yeah. yeah, well, the K-pop, you know, because it floats is perfect for dry flies. And the problem is that it is a hollow, very waxy fiber. So you, it's virtually impossible to die. Uh, there's one word in life uh, or two words that I really um, get me excited. And that's virtually impossible. If someone says that, then I've got to prove them wrong. So basically, we did some research myself and uh, my R&D manager. And we found one scientific paper where someone in Japan had tried dyeing K-pop. I said, look, I want this in like 20, 30 colors, natural colors that will, will give me a, a real variety of dubbing that will flow. You know, so we've got to work out how to get this conical hollow fiber, get the wax off of it, get the dye into that small conical fiber around it without destroying it. And um, after a couple of years, we, we finally got the product together. And um, it's like every product then. It, 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 I don't just send it to market. The first thing I do is uh, come out to all our protein. Any product that we have has to come out to the protein. They've got to say, yes, it works or it doesn't. This one I was excited about because, you know, this, this is really buoyant. It used to be used for life jackets in World War II. If it floats a, a, a body... You know, it's good enough to float a fly. It's just incredible stuff. And, and I do have to kind of disclose to the audience as well. I know I've said this in other videos, but I am an ambassador for Semperfly. I think as people are listening to this conversation, they have an idea why, though. I mean, the, the materials are, are the best in fly tying today. Probably the biggest wow moment for me, I was, I was booked for a fly tying event in the state of Ohio. And typically when it's a fly tying event, it's me on a stage. I'm doing a fly tying demonstration. People are asking questions. But in this case, this was an entire club and they said they wanted everyone to tie along. And I said, well, how many people are we talking about? And it was like 60 people. So for me to be on, I'm on this, this stage, there's 60 tires out there and I'm providing all the fly tying materials. So at one point I go around and I hand everybody just a little clump of K-pop dubbing. And I say to them, you're going to love this stuff. And it was hysterical because I think most fly tires, they've used dubbings, you know, their entire tying career. So they're like, oh, it's dubbing. It's like every other dubbing I used. So when we got to that part of the fly and I said, all right, grab that little dubbing, that's K-pop dubbing, make a dubbing noodle, and you're going to thank me in about 10 seconds. And you could see just light bulbs going off where people were like, look, and they're talking to their buddies. Look at this dubbing noodle. I've never, you know, I've never had one so small and so tight before. And it was hysterical to the point where, Whenever I came around to pass out the materials for the next fly, about half the room stopped me one at a time. Tim, what was that material again? Tim, how do you spell K-Pok? Tim, where's this Semperfly stuff? Tim, where do I buy this stuff? Uh, Andy, it's a you did a great job on that product. So, uh, you know, on behalf of the fly tying community, thank you very much. And you also have fluorescent colors now, if I remember. Yeah, we've uh, done a whole, whole fluorescent range. I mean, again, one of the beauties of working with fly tires like yourself, like the rest of the protein, is, you know, we get feedback about what colors are important. When when I developed K-pop, my vision was a product that would uh, be used for dry flies. It, it's a floating material. Um, and, of course, the minute you release a material with a, a vision of what it's going to be used for to um, 20 fly tires, you've got 40 uses. Uh, I think at the Fly Jam event, the first thing was, can we have it in fluoros? You know, and I'm like, why for, dr you know, for dry flies? No, we want it for hot spots. You know, right. yeah. OK, fine. We're back to the drawing board. We need some more colors. So uh... <laughs> the purple atoms, that's my favorite. I love yep. that. The purple atoms with that. Hey, you know, I guess now that we're, we're talking a little bit about Semperfly, I know you have a couple more materials that you, you want to share for your favorites. Let's take just like a brief little timeout. Can you give all the viewers who don't know about Semperfly just, you know, the, the little, you know, two minute tour of how long you've been a company, where, how you've grown, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah, basically, we prototyped the company in uh, with base materials, which was nano silk, uh, back in 2010. 
And back in 2014, my wife and myself, who we, we're partners, said, look, this thing's got legs. It's not just a product for the UK. This is a worldwide product. Um, and we decided to spin out Semperfly as a totally separate company focused on selling to dealers and distributors all around the world. A totally different vision to what a lot of traditional fly tying companies are like, where they'll send to sell to end users at shows. It, it, it's limiting. You know, you look at the partners we've got now. We've got incredible partners in the States, you know, Stockards, Avid Max, through to Sportsman's Warehouse have just come online. So loads and loads of uh, incredible partners. You know, uh, we've basically been growing. Uh, we were growing slow at 44% a year. Then COVID came along and I think we grew at about 100. Um, and growing is easy when it's a small number. As you get to bigger numbers, still growing at 40, 50%, it makes it entertaining. And I mean, literally just uh, this year, we won the Queen's Award uh, before Her Majesty the Queen died for the level of our exports. 93% of what we produce is exported all around the world. We're talking US, Canada, New Zealand, Malaysia, all through Europe. So it's um, a very fast growing company. I think I've got about 25 mouths that uh, we feed um, every day in the factory and uh, workshop. And then we've got home workers as well. It, it, it's fun. That's for sure. It's fun on our side as well. Thank you. And, and I'll direct all the viewers, check out their website, semperfly.net. They have an online catalog that is unlike anything else in fly tying. So you can access that there. And then Andy, same thing. If, if we have tires who are interested in learning more or fly shops or companies who are interested in carrying products, where would you recommend they check out? Go to semperflyusb2b.com. That's the US website. It has dealer application forms. If you're interested in the material, contact us. Uh, if you just search for Semperfly, you'll find us on all the social media. And uh, literally, you know, we'll, we'll have someone responding uh, quickly to you. All right. Well, let's continue on with our list. I think we have three materials already talked about. What is next for us, Andy? For me, it's the essential material, and that's thread. And, you know, nano silk was our first material. If I'm doing really small, fine flies, then, I mean, nano silk, 20 dernier. I mean, you're talking the finest but strongest thread. This stuff is 10 times stronger than steel. It's the strongest gel spun polyethylene in the market. But it splits beautifully. So if you've got KPOC, you, you can just split it, quick twist and uh, produce wonderful small dry flies. However, you then look at the 200D. I mean, I do a lot of predator fishing. And the 200D, you can get a bit of butt tail and you can lever it and uh, uh, you can really flay up those, <laughs> those butt tails. So, you know, my favorite predator fly is what I call an octopus. And all I do is I put basically sample flash, a layer of tinsels down, a layer of grizzle hackles coming out the back, these 15-inch hackles we talked about earlier. And um, then I'll just tie in bucktail and different colours, and I'll, I will just flare it right to the front of the hook. And it's beautiful. It comes through the water, and it just pulsates. So as you pull it, all the bucktail compresses. You stop, and it goes like that. And it, it's through the water, and I've had yes. more pike on that. Uh, you know, I've shown some pro fishermen it, and uh, for a while it was, you know, can you tie me some more? Uh, no, you can come <laughs> to my office and I'll show you how to tie the thing. To me, threads are the key. And, you know, nano silk, people love it or hate it. I think nano silk, it, it's ultra fine, but some people don't like slippy threads. Um, you can put wax on it, it's really easy to use. But a lot of people are traditionalists. They want a cheaper thread. And for that reason, we develop plastic wax. Again, being a geek, I totally geeked out. I looked at all the competitors, looked at what the breaking strain was, uh, put them under a thousand pound, uh, a thousand times microscope because 
I wanted to look at the twist factor of all the competitors. You know, um, to me, a thread needs to be able to split. If it can't split, then I can't do uh, dubbing noodles. I can't do my uh, dubbing twists. So I took all that into the design um, of classic wax thread. And again, that took us a couple of years to develop um, and basically uh, extrude the thread so that we could get a, um, a very powerful but easily splittable thread. And because unlike a lot of the other th threads which are in the market, they're single core, this is twin core, it means it can lay flat. You know, if you've got two layers of thread, it, it, it can grip the materials more. So, you know, you, you've got more grip, less chance of the feathers flying off. So for me, threads are, you know, absolutely the next material on the list. You know, it, it's the number one in reality without a thread. It doesn't matter what material you've got. The rest is... You're right. <laughs> if you don't have a hook or thread, you're probably out of luck. The, the one thing I'll mention about the nano silks, which I, I love, I tell people all the time, if, if they ask me about the nano silk, they, I, I tell them, it's the gateway drug to Semperfly because once you check those out, which it's a GSP, a gel spun polyethylene, they are just so tough and so resilient. In fact, whenever I came out with my book, uh, I, I had to get a few people to you know kind of sign off on it. And then I I had some celebrities endorse it. And one of them, he, he's an individual who who hunts really big fish. His name's Gunnar Bramer. He has a very popular YouTube following as well. He said, "Yeah, I'd love to you know I'd love to sign off in the book, Tim. Give you a little blurb for the back." He said, "Can you send me the section on the streamers in your book?" I said, "Absolutely." And his first comment was, "He saw that I used nano silk in like a twelve aught. He was like, there is no way you can tie that fly with twelve aught, and it's." It, it, yes, you can. And it was kind of like my way to highlight that thread in, in that section of the book, because it's just such incredible stuff. I'm kind of like you where I, I, I love the GSP. It's a little slippery. I've gotten used to it over the years. I still love classic waxed. But now as I've been tying with both of them over the last couple of seasons, I really gravitate towards the nano silk. So that's that's kind of turned into my most popular one. So anyone, if you're listening out there and you want to try one over the other, I would point you in that direction. The stuff is just incredible. All right, let's get yeah. on to the last item, our last favorite fly tying material from Andy Kitchener. Andy, what do you got for us? Uh, for me, it would be microglint. And the reason is I, I use microglint pearl particularly. For me, I get uh, four loops and that in the tail becomes the shut. Um, absolutely perfect. I can use it for wings. I can use it for ribs. It is, you know, uh, the, uh, the 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 material that I use probably more than any other. But of course, in all the other colours, you've got wonderful tags. If I'm doing a variety of clink hammers, I'll have micro glint in the the tail as tags, just to give that little um, hint that there's something there, just as that uh, tail is just dipping in the water. Yeah. So micro glint is for me the. the you know, uh, an essential. You got it. And for people who haven't used it before, can you describe the material? Because it's more of a tinsel in a sense. Yeah, my, micro glint is a, it is a tinsel. It's a specially treated tinsel. It, it's totally different from what I'd call a traditional tinsel, which is a flat um, material, much like an aluminium foil, but with color. Micro glint actually has cross weave on it. So it really is a, a, a quite a neat material. It's an awesome one. Well, Andy, thank you so much for sharing your list with us today. It was a pleasure talking with you. I know how people can reach out to you, but thanks for giving us some time. And, and we look to, you know, forward to having you on this show in the future. It's been really good to see you. Good to chat. All right, Andy, I'll see you soon. And for everybody else out there, I really am sure you got a lot from this interview with Andy Kitchener at Semperfly. But don't forget, I've done this before with somebody else, Mr. Tom Rosenbaum. And if you click right, which way is it? Right here, you can watch that video right now.